Hey, it's me, Aaron. Today's episode is going to be slightly different. It's going to be more of an introduction into the work that we're doing in southern Alberta. There, we're looking at the biostratigraphy of the Dinosaur Park formation and comparing it to the Brazil formation in the mountains. <laughs> So here's a figure that we did for the website. And you can see that the Brazil formation is equivalent to the Wapiti formation in the northwest of Alberta. And you can also see that it's the equivalent of the Foremost, the Old Man, the Dinosaur Park, Bear Paw, Horseshoe Canyon, and the Battle formations in the prairies of Alberta. And underlying the Wapiti, the Brazil, and the foremost are marine sediments. Now, we're not overly concerned about them at the moment, so we're not gonna discuss them in, in much detail, uh, but it is all of the same Western Interior Seaway uh, sediments from when it was quite high. Overlying the Wapiti, Brazil, and Battle formations are the last Cretaceous sediments of Alberta, known as the Colspur and Scollard formations. Approximately halfway through the formations, you can find the KPG boundary, which represents the end of the Cretaceous and when all the dinosaurs went extinct. Due to the difficulty of working in the Brazil, most of the specimens that have been recovered from the formation have been recovered in the last couple of years by myself and my team. These include a ceratopsid from the lower Brazil, a hadrosaur from the lower portion of the middle Brazil, a new lambiosaurine that Koi and myself are currently working on, a theropod skeleton that we'll get to in future videos uh, from the lower portion of the upper Brazil, and an Amontosaurus bone bed from the middle of the upper Brazil. Several other specimens that we haven't marked onto this uh, figure have also been recovered. Uh, these include partial hadrosaur elements and fragmentary uh, theropod elements and a couple fish vertebrae. One of the biggest research questions MADP is investigating is how do the ecosystems and their flora and fauna represented in the Brazil formation compare to those of the southeastern Alberta coastal environments of the foremost Old Man and Dinosaur Park formation? To do that, we go to southeastern Alberta, where we can find all three formations exposed along the South Saskatchewan River. Specifically, we go to Prairie Coulee's natural area, where all three formations are exposed at the mouth of White Rock Coulee. Although smaller than Dinosaur Provincial Park, White Rock Coulee still provides a significant amount of Dinosaur Park formation and Old Man formation to be explored. Due to the well-cemented Comrie sandstone and the Old Man formation, the Cooley walls are usually quite steep, preventing us from being able to explore much of that formation. The Dinosaur Park formation, on the other hand, erodes more evenly into rolling hills, providing us access into areas that we can work. As a result, the Cooley is quite deep, with walls reaching nearly 80 meters high, providing a different type of work environment, one that's quite difficult to get around. Beginning at the mouth of White Rock Coulee, we move east into the canyon. Here we get a better understanding of what the stratigraphy is like and the sedimentology. This includes the vertical faces of the Comrie sandstone on the left-hand side. We also see marine muds of the foremost formation at the bottom of the hill in the center. The contact between the foremost and old man formations occurs at the top of the Tabor coal zone, which in the center of your screen you can see is a black line. The contact between the Old Man and the Dinosaur Park formations is a little bit more complicated. Through most of the coulee, you can find the top of the Old Man formation by a well-cemented, hard, iron-stained sandstone. In 2011, Hathaway et al. published an open report for the Alberta Geological Survey. In the report, the authors publish on a stratigraphic column from the mouth of White Rock Coulee. In it, they include the Foremost, the Old Man, and the Dinosaur Park formation. Due to the proximity of their measured section and the hill that you see in the image, we're going to consider the measurements and their section approximately equal to what we see on that hill. The only difference is that the bottom three meters of the measured section is missing in the photograph to the right. Now that we know what portions of formations are found within White Rock Coulee, we can better start to predict what animals we might find here, especially dinosaurs since that's what we're currently focusing on. Within the White Rock Coulee area, we would expect to find four, maybe five hadrosaurs. This would include Parasaurolophus and Corythosaurus from the Dinosaur Park Formation and Brachylophosaurus from the Old Man Formation. Gryposaurus is well known from the Dinosaur Park Formation and has been tentatively identified from the Old Man Formation within a bone bed in southern Alberta. 
depending on the extent of the upper dinosaur park formation that's preserved within the White Rock Coulee area, there is a possibility of finding Lambiosaurus as well. However, there is no recognized fossils of this taxon yet identified. The lower dinosaur park formation has two well-known ceratops, it's Centrosaurus and Chasmosaurus. Whereas the old man formation has three ceratopsids, all of which are only known from a handful of sites at most. These include Coronasaurus, which was originally identified as Centrosaurus brinkmani, and Alberta ceratops and Wendy ceratops, both from the lower old man formation. Penoplosaurus and Euplocephalus are both well known from the dinosaur park formation. The old man formation, on the other hand, still has no identified ankylosaur material known from it. One exception might be Scullosaurus, however, the type locality of it is still unknown, and so it might have actually come from the lower dinosaur park formation. Gorgosaurus is the most common Tyrannosaur within the dinosaur park formation and is now known to extend down into the old man formation as well. Displetosaurus is known from the old man formation and has been reported to be in the dinosaur park formation. However, new research is suggesting that perhaps some of these specimens within the dinosaur park formation are actually Gorgosaurus. The newest Tyrannosaur to Canada, Thanatotheristes, is known from the upper foremost formation and was found only about 45 kilometers south of White Rock Coulee. Up until recently, small theropod biostratigraphy was a topic that had not yet been studied in great detail. The discovery of a new truodontid within a dinosaur park formation began to give us a little bit more insight into the biostratigraphy of, of these animals. It is now known that Stenonychosaurus is constrained to the lower dinosaur park formation. However, we do not know if it's present within the old man formation. Although these are far from the total number of taxa known from these formations, it gives us a better understanding of what we can expect to find and where we'll be able to find it within the formation. So this brings us to what we currently have. What has been found here before? So to start, we know that we have one articulated Centrosaurus at least, which is currently located at the University of Alberta, and Koi and I have been working on Koi from the last episode. What else do we have? Unfortunately, due to pre-burial taphonomy, articulated and associated skeletons seem to be less common in the Dinosaur Park formation of White Rock Coulee area compared to that of the Dinosaur Provincial Park area. Because of this bias towards disarticulated specimens, it took three summers, however, we were able to find our first articulated specimens. This includes two hadrosaurs, one that has at least a partial skull, and a tyrannosaur which you'll be seeing video of in the coming weeks. Unfortunately, due to the fact that we still don't have our permits, uh, we haven't been able to get out to start excavating, but we do expect that the Tyrannosaur is likely Gorgosaurus. The other two could be Corythosaurus or Gryposaurus, but we don't know yet. Last year, doing preliminary work at the very beginning of the season, we were able to locate a new hadrosaur bone bed, um, and we were able to get a couple bones out, but we don't know what taxon it is yet, and so hopefully this summer will provide us a little bit more information as to the, what that is. But it's the highest known hadrosaur bone bed within the old man, so it's a little bit exciting. The first year that we were out, we also found a ceratopsid, partial ceratopsid skull, but we didn't add it to this list uh, primarily because we don't know what it is. Um, the phylogenetic programs are suggesting that it's Centrosaur. However, there are several really odd characters that are, well, basically screaming Chasmosaur. Um, and so we're not too sure what it is. It could be Mercuriceratops, um, but there's really peculiar features. And that was found uh, only a couple meters above the old man uh, contact within the dinosaur park formation. And so I've left it off the list for now. You'll hear about it further in the future, um, but myself and the other co-authors are still kind of trying to figure out what exactly we're looking at. Here I'm going to briefly discuss the Centrosaurus skeleton, which originated from White Rock Coulee and is now in the University of Alberta collections. Collected by the U of A field crew in 1972, the specimen was recovered from the second sandstone unit up from the old man contact, although proper stratigraphic work still needs to be conducted for the research being led by Koi. Despite being collected in 1972, preparation of the skeleton only began recently with the skull being done six years ago and the front limb being done during the summer of 2019. Most of the skeleton was articulated and currently remains unprepared in storage for now. 
Although much of the skull is missing, large fragments were discovered weathering out of the quarry and will be collected this summer to be put back together and joined to the specimen currently in collections. I hope this video helped you better understand what we're doing in southern Alberta and how that work might pertain to the work that we're doing in the Brazil. If you feel like you learned something new today, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to continue learning more stuff about what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.